Coming up, Rhino and I had another terrible meal at a Universal Orlando hotel on this episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams, and today we have a really fun dining review for you. Before we get started, though, I do need to remind you that this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like us and our content, you want to support us, please consider booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money. So go get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, please make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comments section below. And also for the audio listeners, if you could take a second to make sure you're subscribed to the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition wherever you listen to podcasts, that would be great. And if you're listening through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star rating and review if you enjoy the show. And as I said, we have a dining review for you. Uh, This one's actually kind of a disaster, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I, yeah, we should have saw this coming. So uh, basically, the story behind it is that we, Rhino and myself, participated in a Universal Orlando Resort familiarization through Dreams Unlimited Travel. And so part of that was that Universal. Uh, Universal's travel partners group that they have did give us free rooms at Universal's Endless Summer Resort Dockside Inn and Suites for two nights. I believe we were there and that's what they covered. They covered the actual hotel room itself, but then we covered everything else, including the the dining that we did while we were at Universal Orlando Resort. And so we don't hold back from it. And that's also why we're not actually going to review the rooms itself because of course we did not pay for it we'll probably share a little bit of thoughts and you know thoughts and opinions as we move forward but we're not going to do an actual full-blown review of what it's like to stay at the hotel because we didn't pay for it and of course that's the that's the standard that we always have at the Diz. if we didn't pay entirely for it then we're not going to fully review it but we are fully reviewing the the food that we had while we were there. And uh, this review in particular is from Dockside's Pier 8 Market. I always forget the name because when I read it, I'm like, why does this sound like a Pier 1 Imports? Do those even exist anymore? I'm not even quite sure. I don't think they do. Uh, but the name always falls out of my head. And this one is, it's kind of a disaster. I don't want to ruin it all for you. And I know you're dying to hear Rhino's voice on this too. So we're going to go ahead, watch the review, and maybe I'll share more afterwards. I don't know. Oh, hey, hey, everyone. Craig here. Rhino. And we are at Universal's Dockside Inn and Suites, part of Universal's Endless Summer Resort. And uh, what are we doing today? Well, we are going to eat at their quick service restaurant that they have here, Pier 8 Market. I'm not going to lie. I do not have high hopes for it because when we stayed over at Surfside and in Suites, we hated it. Yeah. Except for the pizza we had that night. The yeah. delivery man was great. Yeah. The, the room delivery pizza was great. But the food that we had for, I think all meals that we had there was all uh, underwhelming yeah. so it's uh you know it, it's it's gonna be it's actually really it's easy for it to over exceed what we had at surfside and in suites but i don't know it, it could also be terrible too so we're just gonna have to go find out Wow, there was a lot of really tough decisions to make here at Pier 8 Market. Obviously, there's burgers and sandwiches, pre-made sandwiches. We have fried chicken, 
that you can get is a family thing and pizza and I think we're probably going to get fried chicken in another review. We'll do like the family style eight piece thing that they offer with sides. Uh, and for this one, this first one, the first meal here, I wanted to try a sandwich. So I ultimately went with the mahi sandwich and this is $12, comes with one side. On the mahi sandwich, of course, we have mahi and uh, coleslaw and remoulade sauce and this is on a multi-grain bun and for the choice of sides you have the choice of tater tots french fries or onion rings i went with onion rings because you have to go with onion rings i'll be honest i don't have high expectations for it the coleslaw is milking uh you know it's as and it's dripping on the plates i thought at first it was the remoulade sauce but no it's the coleslaw it is it's a, it's a very mayo-based coleslaw. And there's so much white liquid on this plate. I don't really care for any of it. I don't know why I chose the one thing that's probably gonna make me incredibly sick later, but it's how I punish myself. There's some positives, oh, no. and there's some negatives. Oh, no. uh, first off, the main positive is that it is, it's hot and fresh and it's not, uh, you know, we, when we stayed at Surfside way, way back, we did not have a lot of positive things to say about their food port because of how, you know, it's kind of just sits under heat lamps for too long. This is, um, this feels a little bit fresher in that way. And it's not, it's not bad. Um, there is just a lot of white sauce on this thing, a little too much for my taste and kind of overpowering it specifically the sauce from the mayonnaise it is a lot to handle in the fish it's got nice grilled char marks which are actually flavorful like i have that grill flavor from it but yeah i don't, I don't know i don't know I'm, I'm gonna definitely have to eat more of this thing i have a lot to process with the mahi i need to take my mind off of it for a second We'll get to that in a little bit here, but I'm gonna try the onion ring because that's that's what I went with. I love a good onion ring. And this one actually looks well. I mean, it seems like a small portion, even for a side, only four onion rings, but you know what? They always fill you up faster than you think. The onion rings are awesome. Uh, crispy, salty, you know, a, a nice big thick piece of onion inside, but still like the right balance of the coating. I could probably just eat like two full boats of onion rings and be happy right now. And yeah, I like that. I like that. I went with the Beyond Burger. No surprise, I like to try the plant-based options. Uh, the Beyond Burger here is $12 as well. It is uh, listed as their vegetarian burger with crushed avocados and caramelized onions. Crushed avocado, it's really just guacamole on top of here. Whatever they use for guacamole. And there's definitely a lot of onions in here. Uh, and I'm just gonna dive right in here. I don't know. The avocado doesn't really taste like anything, so I feel like I'm just eating bush. Um, but the onions are very oniony still. They taste like somebody pulled them out of the onion ring and put them here, um, which is fine. It just isn't all like coming together for me, but um, I don't know. So the Beyond Burger patty is fine. I think, again, this happened to me once before in a review I just did recently where I feel like sometimes when the burger isn't treated properly somewhere in the process, it gets a little, it can have like a chewy aspect to it. And I'm definitely getting a little bit of that chewy aspect. It's not inedible or anything. I mean, I'm still gonna eat it, but um, I felt like this had more promise than it's living up to, uh, especially since both Craig and I's food was made like for us because they were like, oh, hold on a minute. And uh, it'll just be a couple of minutes, but I'm gonna take one more bite here. Oh, 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 yeah. It's just green liquid, it's just green paste on top of here. I don't know, I don't know that there's an actual avocado in this. I got tots from a side. I feel like as long as you're cooking the tots all the way through, you can't go wrong. And these I approve of, crispy. But, um, I know there's like different brands of tater tots or potato barrels or whatever you want to call them. They call them tots here. Um, but 
This one is the kind where it's like chunky potato. If that makes any sense to anybody. Sometimes you have them and you bite them and they're smooth. Sometimes it feels like it's a million pieces put together. That's what these ones taste like. But I'm fine with it. I wish my mask wasn't on right now so you could see my reaction to this meal. Terrible. Yikes. Um, this was kind of a complete What did you say? Mess. You, you said in the opening something about the bar. You were, you were saying that you didn't think the bar would be that hard to jump over or something like that. Yeah, it I should be. be that I know. I said something along the lines of like, it should be very easy to over exceed what we had yes. before. Yeah. Something along those lines. Uh, this did not at all. I... I again, we should have watched our review from Surfside and in Suites because I have a feeling that, that Leaf just the poked her head. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that we probably hated this just as much. And I'm not trying to be mean. Um, it, this, my fish in some places was like undercooked. I like a good flaky mahi. It doesn't even need to be cooked, like, you know, it doesn't need to be charred to a crisp, but like, it was, it was, uh, it was just a mess because some parts of it were like overcooked. Some were really undercooked. It just was not even. The onion rings were amazing, and Rhino saw the bottom. I should have got video of it uh, or a photo even. But the amount of mayonnaise that soaked through so much to the bottom of the bun, but it was on top of the fish. It defied logic <laughs> in how it got under there. It was the milkiest mayonnaise I've ever seen, too. Uh, it was it was a mess, and it just did not taste good. And I don't like drippy foods. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm convinced I'm going to get sick. Well, I was saying that uh, as soon as it stopped recording me, I started to I ate the rest of my burger, and and you stepped out stepped out for a phone call really quick. Every bite I took of that after the video, it was it actually tasted burned on mine on the outside, which is crazy because for a second I was like, I think this. I already said I don't think the Beyond Burger was cooked well, which is. You know, I, I, it was weird that both ours came out at the same time because I think tuna, the ahi, nah, not tuna, mahi, mahi, and the the beyond patty take different cooking times. So I'm yeah. not sure what what was going on in that process. And then the guacamole or avocado, it was smashed avocado, what they called it. That one, not sure. smashed avocado. That was like monster blood, though. That stuff just kept like growing and kept like molding, but it didn't really. Again, it didn't really. It didn't do anything. It yeah. wasn't flavorful. It was just texture. Yeah. And I don't want loose texture. Yeah, I mean, it, this should not have been a surprise to us. Very disappointing. Uh, I, I still had high hopes for it. It yeah. just did not. They got a nice setup. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Uh, I, I just, I love the theme of it. It was very loud in there. I know that the music was piped in for if it was a completely filled room and that would have been like the perfect level for it, but it was very loud. Uh, it was, but it, it, it's pretty, and you know what? There's there's a lot of options there, so it's not like it, it, maybe maybe we just chose wrong this time. It, what's nice is that all the tables have like the outlets where you can plug in a computer or your phone. Yeah, because it even had the USB plug on it, so it was, it was. I thought that was that was a nice touch. In the it design, was. But. Yeah, but overall, I have a feeling uh, my sentiments are the exact same here as they were with Surfside. That KFC Just, still open across yeah, the I think the KFC is open still. I think there's a Red Lobster right on the yeah. other side of us. Uh, just eat, eat at the parks. Do not uh, maybe. Go to City Walk. Yeah, go to City Walk anywhere. I maybe our minds will change a little bit here because we are we're going to get the fried chicken. We're gonna do the fried chicken, and I'm sure the pizza would live up to it. We're not gonna do the pizza uh, probably anytime soon, but it's. I, I feel like I feel like maybe there's still a chance to redeem this place, but in terms of most of the stuff that you're gonna just, you know, get here, the burgers, sandwiches. I'm sure breakfast is probably fine. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, I don't know what they serve for breakfast. I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't recommend this place. I eat eat over at City Walk in the parks and come back here and you know, maybe just snack and such. But it's just my take. That is it for the review, and I can confirm that both Rhino and I did not feel great afterwards. We neither one of us got completely sick from it, but it was it was a rough night.
in our uh, individual rooms. We were not sharing a room together, but we both we both did not in, enjoy ultimately the the outcomes of the the dining choices that we made while at Pier 8 Market. And I also feel like I should have said this at the beginning before this started, but this was weeks and weeks and weeks ago. This was uh, actually, it might've been like a month and a half ago at this point now. So it was before Universal Orlando dropped their outdoor mask mandate, as well as their indoor mask mandate. Obviously we were inside and, and because of that, we were sitting down with food and we were able to take off our masks to eat for that. But while we were filming it, we were just following the guidelines for what the hotel and Universal Orlando resort was asking so for the audio listeners if you're wondering why we were wearing masks that's why and for the audio listeners if you're wondering why are their voices a little bit more quiet during the intro and outro portion that's the reason why and uh, we're almost out of all the reviews that we have while the mask mandates were still in effect so pretty soon uh, those will be gone and then we'll be back to uh, hopefully a little bit better audio when we're live in the field but that is about all I have to say about the experience at Dockside's Pier 8 Market at Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Dockside Inn and Suites. I really don't have anything else to share. And beyond that, in the Universal Orlando realm, there's uh, no other big news right now. I mean, yesterday, Velocicoaster, uh, they had their grand opening, which that's super, super exciting. Uh, it just I, I we can't talk about this ride enough. Uh, we have amazing footage on our YouTube channel. Of course, this one, if you're watching it here, youtube.com slash UO fan of Rhino and myself doing a rider cam of Jurassic World Velocicoaster. And it's hilarious because I'm in, I'm about as giddy and excited as I can be. But then at the same time, too, you have Rhino who is just out of his mind terrified but having a good time so it's like we have a, a tale of a tale of two riders and i think uh i think actually uh the today show might have posted something similar because i believe that uh, one of the Today Show hosts also went on Velocicoaster with Keenan Thompson, who was there while we were there. And it was really cool seeing him. Didn't get a chance to get close to him and, and meet him. Only got to see him from, you know, like six, ten feet away uh, because he was there doing doing shoots. And then also there meeting some uh, Universal fans that Universal brought in for, for an extra event. But it was really cool getting to see him there. But I forgot where I was going with this story. I don't think it really matters, but yeah, it, it actually, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, that was it, is that Today Show, when they finally posted the video of Keenan and the other person riding, they were saying the same thing. It's like, oh, a tale of two riders. Keenan was having fun. The Today Show reporter was not as much, but I don't I don't even remember. Now I might be making this all up. That's probably time for me to to wrap this up, but uh, it, did, it did have its grand opening, so now it's guaranteed, as long as there's no malfunctions, breakdowns, that Velocicoaster will definitely 100% be open on your next trip to Universal Orlando and you know wait times obviously jumped up really high on day one it was I think the highest point it was like 240 minutes and then slowly 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 made its way down but they were giving out free churros to everyone yesterday because of the the joke that you know it's it wasn't the Velocicoaster being built it was a churro stand and so they really really dug in and embraced it and very very cool of Universal to celebrate the grand opening in that way and yeah just uh, not going to be the last time we talk about Jurassic World Velocicoaster I believe we're going to talk about it next week and uh, I, I was able to do some interviews during our little media event that we were a part of so at some point in time I'm going to have to share those as well too and yeah it's just an exciting time to visit Universal Orlando Resort so if you want to and you also want to support us please consider again booking through Dreams Unlimited Travel you can get a free no obligation quote at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com then also of course if you were watching this on YouTube make sure that you do subscribe to us you o fan and you are hitting that thumbs up and you are also leaving us those uh, comments questions and video suggestions in the comment section that's below and if you're listening to this please once again remake make sure 
So remember that you are subscribed to the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition wherever you're listening. And if you're specifically listening through Apple Podcasts, please leave us five-star ratings and reviews. Uh, we Did we get any new reviews this week? I think we might have. I'm not a thousand percent positive on this, but I think we got one from Chester1753 that said, I used to be skeptical about listening to this podcast, but decided to give it uh, one out of the whim and loved it. They're funny and helpful when visiting the parks, uh, which they try to go once a year after listening to the podcast, finally gave the others a try as well, but wouldn't have happened if it wasn't because of them. Wow. That's a huge compliment. Thank you so much, Chester1753. And then from Seuss Trolley, I love listening to Craig and Rhino. You two make me smile and I feel like I'm in the parks with you. I'm always amazed at how you both pick up on the little details in the queues, tribute stores that I never see. Thank you for bringing you O to me. You are very welcome. Thank you for leaving the positive reviews. Really, really appreciate it. And I will give you a shout out on the show if you also leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. Also want to give a shout out to Johnny, who we know that uh, watches our stuff that we met at Universal uh, very recently. And yeah, hopefully we'll look out for you next time we're around Universal Orlando as well. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again real soon with another episode. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name. <laughs> <laughs>